Hey, Master Gardeners, here it is late afternoon. I'm getting off work, but I wanted to share with you the growth of my winter annuals. I sowed these last late summer, and now I left them all winter long uncovered, and look how great they're doing. So I'm gonna invite you to look at each one of them. So come on in and look at my bachelor's buttons. These were sown late summer in milk jugs, and then my Master Gardener interns put them in the ground in November, just before they graduated. Some of them are getting a little tall, so what I'm doing is pinching the tops out. Take those tops out because you want the plants to be low and flat and send basal shoots. And we're on Route 1, so you have to listen to the traffic. So anyway, there's my bachelor's buttons. They're really looking sharp. And then we've got some larkspur I'll show down there, show you down there. We started, this is a brand new bed. I got really good quality compost from a local Aberdeen grower. And that's why this bed is looking so nice and healthy. We put in three trees and look at what happened to my snapdragons. These are looking horrible. And I think because the rain sprout is leaking and dripping way too much water, that is one damaging thing that can occur in winter is too wet of a soil. And all my snapdragons, which I should be pinching the tops out of right now, but they look awful this yellow foliage and it's got to be too wet this winter that's what i'm thinking here's my sow date i got my sign in here i sowed them uh, it says 9 12. so september 12th i started these these are called winter annuals and what winter annuals mean you usually think of annuals as only lasting one year so these are annuals that can winter over during the winter months and give you bigger healthier plants in the spring months so it's a pretty cool idea. My neighbor does this, and so I've started to copy some of her ideas, and that's why I'm trying it here at the extension office beds. So I started some pansies. They're looking a little bit small, but at least they're in full bloom here. Same thing, all sowed back in September. Now, these, these are dianthus that I put inside of a cold frame that's around the south side of the building here. I took windows, which are right over here. I have six windows and I just stood the milk cartons underneath and I have bales of straw at the two end. Just a simple cold frame and I started these dianthus December 1st, December 1st, 2020, dianthus. And so here they are. So now's the time, it's warm enough. I'm gonna start popping them in the ground. You know me, I love milk jug gardening. So I'm always using my milk jugs. So I'm just popping them out separating them lightly, planting them in the ground, mulch them. Now, technically there's blackout dates for fertilizing. As of March 15th, we're able to fertilize out in the soil, but until then, it's really not, you're not to be putting fertilizer on, especially if there's, we call it blackout dates, especially if the soil's frozen. So my dianthus are gonna get really tall. They're gonna be a foot and a half. So I'll bring you out and let you look at them later on. I've got large spur coming up. I planted a curve of that. Come on down here. It's where they look a little prettier. There's my little bed. These little lark spurs are looking a little bit healthier. So going to be some of my pretty spring flowers. Now these really could have been started again about a month ago. I should have started more of these in the house. These are dianthus. Again, I tell you, I put in these winter annuals last November and they've been sitting here uncovered. I know you probably see this little metal frame, but I did not use this. I did not cover them with any fabric because I felt like if it got really harsh cold during the dead of winter, I'd rush in and cover them, but I've never needed to do that. So just giving you some tips on growing winter annuals and I'll keep you posted on how good they're gonna look.